Good evening, gentle listener, and welcome to Distractable, a Wood Elf production with your hosts, Mark the Magnificent, Bob the Brilliant, and Wade the Wonderful. This week, the terrific triplicity talk of tales of escalation, one-upmanship and outdoing the opposition. Yes, it's hold my beer time. Please put out thy munchies and enjoy the show. Hey guys, welcome back to Distractable. Here we discuss anything that interests us and compete to see who can bring the most captivating stories to the table. After dominating and crushing everyone and winning handily last week, I might add, I'm this week's host, so I will be the judge. And we have a fun one today, boys. But first, Mark, Bob, how are y'all doing? I'm good. Killed my GoXLR this morning, or my non-brand mixer. <laughs> Killed it. Killed it dead. What'd you, what'd you do, Mark? How'd you how'd you how to break? I spilled a non-brand nutritious liquid onto it, mm. and it instantly died. And uh, the strangest thing is that it screamed as it died. Like it's <laughs> difficult to explain, but it sounded like. <laughs> We were actually in the call when that happened. Yeah. Bob, do you remember what was what was the last thing we heard him say before? I think we, went... we literally heard from Mark saying, like we were like getting ready to, to record something or do and Mark was just like, Oh god <laughs> And that was it. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. And then he sent us this like fun text. It's like, oh no, she's dead. It's dead. It's so very yeah. dead. <laughs> yep. Pretty much. I said, she dead. Oh, she fucking dead. Oh my fucking God. It's actually dead. <laughs> That's what I said. That was our update as to why Mark cut out mid -sentence. I just hear a terrifying screaming. That's <laughs> just hear the sound of a thousand souls entering our realm. I mean, pretty much that's what it amounted to. It was in pain and I had to put it out of its misery. So, and I'm going to miss that thing, that non-brand mixer that, that lasted me quite a while. And it was a, it was a workhorse and, um, now I got my old one that I don't like. Oof. I'll order another one. Yeah, I might. I might. I just might. I'd recommend it. I will. How are you, Bob? I'm I'm all right. You know? I'm I was during that whole thing I was sort of sitting here trying to think of what's happened to me recently. Nothing's ever going to live up to the fridge. My life went from being filled with rage about the situation to now every time I do anything and all my social media it's just a thousand people constantly being like but does your fridge work? Well, does it? <laughs> yeah, it's fine. Is your house covered in water and your yard nothing besides an ocean now? No, it's it's all it's it's back to normal now. It's all fixed. Are there mm -hmm. cables and cords and tubes all over the street still? Oh, so that wasn't even the in the episode. Maybe this is a follow up oh. thing because we recorded that before I learned that. Oh, so, that's so right. if you didn't listen to the fridge episode, which should precede this one, in the episode I was pissed and it ended with the pipe in the backyard was broken, my backyard was pretty flooded, and the fridge deliverers were incompetent. After the episode recording, I went outside and I saw something laying in the street in front of our house and I was like, oh, that's weird, like trash or something. When you buy a new refrigerator, they make you buy a water connection, like a new water connection hose thing. It's mm. like 50 bucks. And Lowe's is like, yeah, you can't buy a fridge without it. So I did. The guys who delivered the fridge left it in the box. And as they were running away, as they were trying to get away from my house that they had just destroyed, <laughs> terrified because I was glaring at them, they must have been on the truck. And one of them was like, shit, dude, we got the hose. We didn't put the hose in. Fuck, what do we do? We keep it? And the guy's like, no, he bought that. We can't keep that. He might notice. And the other guy's just like, oh, I'm going to throw it. Let's go. And they <laughs> threw it out the back of the truck and I found it in the street in the packaging. So yeah. I'm not, I'm not mad about it anymore, but that was a hilarious, like that happened. And I actually started laughing. I went from unbridled rage to like, this is a cartoon and those guys are incompetent morons. How did this happen? I imagine they were in such a hurry that one of them jumped in the driver's seat, like was trying to turn the engine to get the vehicle rolling, and the other one hopped in the back and was like, I'm not even gonna get in this chair. And like is trying to slam the big door closed and they pulled the fridge out of, sees the box, just kicks it out, and like slams the door as they take off, screeching and leaving like tread marks on the street. Yeah. I was saying say that you think they were looking out the window and they saw Bob walking like the Terminator <laughs> towards them and was like, <laughs> Oh god! Throw the cable! Go, Jim! Hit it, Jim! Get out of here! 
And they fucking do a donut. This is like a rule of the universe. They look and I swing open the door and I'm standing like a statue and they just hear, John, 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 John. And they're like, oh shit. <laughs> God damn it. Run, it's the Terminator. <laughs> or we're getting Jason emerging from the puddle of water like you were in there and you step out like dripping water. And <laughs> I don't know. I can't imagine, but like, I must have scared the shit out of those guys. I didn't threaten them or anything. I'm just very large, and I was about as angry as I've been in my entire life. Yeah. It's kind of impressive, honestly. Thank you, incompetent refrigerator delivery men, for giving me such a funny story to tell. A great episode of Distractable that everyone seemed to enjoy. They seemed to like it, so that's good. It was universal. I had people texting me being like, that episode was amazing. If you were listening to this and you haven't listened to Bob's Fridge episode yet, if you're just finding distractible, stop listening to this one unless it's funnier and go listen to Bob's Fridge for context. 1,000%. Yes. But alas, we have to move on from the fridge and uh, hopefully we have a good one in store for you guys today. Again, since I won last week, I'll be hosting and I've decided that we should talk about some of our favorite either personal or friends or even just internet stories of hold my beer moments. And uh, whichever one of you gives me the best hold my beer moments will be declared the winner and can host next week's episode. Yeah, I've already got one for this. Oh, yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. But Bob, if you need some time, we can probably insert an ad read or something right here. Oh, oh, oh. Doesn't actually buy me. Anytime. We're already on the other side of the ad <laughs> oh, yeah. right now. You can go first, though. You, you yielding to me? I mean, I can give my title. The title. Yeah, is give your title. Be... Let me. Let me think. Yeah. Let me think. Yeah, the title, uh, Wade, for your consideration is "The Day I Broke My Ass." <laughs> you know what? I might have uh, another one that goes with that too myself. Now that you mention it. Yeah, I know that you have some ass adventures. In your I past. sure do. But, all right. Well, that's relatable. I like relatable. You get 77 points. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you very much. I have a, a, a small story of me being a really dumb child. Yeah. Oh, man. We could do a whole episode on just dumb child moments. Oh, yeah. yeah. I think I need time. I think I need more time. I want to tell a story, but I need to think about it. 14 points for your honesty. That's good. I guess um, by default, Mark, you get to go first. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so it's it's not so much like a, a cohesive story with a proper ending, but we'll see where it goes. It's more like a series of misadventures. And Bob, actually, you might remember this. You weren't there for it, but you might have seen the aftermath of me stumbling, limping back to the dorm room in pain. I do think um, I know what you're going to talk about, yeah. Yeah, because uh, so it's freshman year at college in the University of Cincinnati. And me trying to be a social butterfly, which I was not. I wanted to do like an activity. So I don't remember how I was there might have been a flyer for this or something or maybe there was like a newsletter that was given out or a website that said something. But I don't think that this was a sanctioned activity because what I tried to do was um parkour and it was like supposed to be a quote unquote beginner parkour thing, but there's really no way to do a beginner parkour adventure. And it was just like, I showed up at the place and we met in the parking garage in the University of Cincinnati. And it was me and three other dudes. And one of them had done parkour, maybe. And the other three of us were just like complete newbies getting in there and just trying to have an adventure. So really looking back on it, this might have been the stupidest thing I've ever done in my entire life. But I exuded confidence while I was there. I was like, oh yeah, I know exactly what I'm doing. Parkour, you jump around on stuff and you try to do sick leaps off of things and you do tucks and rolls, right? It's exactly like the episode of The Office where they're like jumping on things and going, parkour. <laughs> The ripe year of 2007. Um, so we jump around the parking garage, and I don't know why I was okay with this. We were jumping around the fourth level of the parking garage. It wasn't the one by our dorm, like right next to us. It was the one on the other side of campus by the engineering building that had like six floors by that big concrete tower. Mm -hmm. And so we were leaping around there. We were jumping around. We would go like over the edge with like 50 feet below us and we would just like dance around there for a little bit and like shimmy our way across. And so we actually end up like dropping down two floors any way but the stairs or the ramp inside. So like God. crawling around the building outside. And I don't die at this point. But we get down to the second level, and it's time to drop from the second story and do a sweet tuck and roll into this little grass patch. And so the first guy goes, and he goes, like, drop and tuck and roll, and it's perfect, and 
he's fine. And then the second guy goes and he manages to do it, a tuck and roll. And it's at this point that I realized they assumed I knew how to do a tuck and roll, oh which I had never done in my life. So there I am hanging off by one hand from the second story ledge of a concrete parking garage, looking at a tiny patch of grass that I'm supposed to hit. And in my head, I'm like, it can't be that hard. <laughs> and so they're all giving me encouraging words. They're like, you can do it. I'm like, you got this. And I'm like, I got this. I got this. And so I drop. And when my legs hit the ground, thankfully they bent the correct way, but I didn't go forward at all. I landed from the second story straight onto my ass, like 100% full on into my ass. And like the way the guys looked at me, it looked like they saw me die because I felt something pop. I felt it like weirdly no pain. But like this stunned thing where you're like on the ground, like, uh, am I dead? Uh, am I dead? And um, I, I get up from that and they're just like, what the fuck? Are you okay? And like, weirdly enough, I, I seemed totally fine. I wasn't, by the way. I want to mention I was not okay. But I shook it off because I was like, I'm, I'm tough. I'm tough. I'm, I'm totally fine. So I decided to take this, <laughs> this, uh, this um, parkour adventure to the next level. And go like, yeah, yeah, I'm totally fine. Uh, and then the guy behind me is about to go. And uh, he drops. And instead of falling on his ass, he fell on his face. Oh, no. Like, his legs hit. He went forward. He did not roll. Ugh. Like, 100% <laughs> no roll right into his face and chest hit the ground. Jesus. And you just hear him go, <gasps> like, <gasps> oh, God, like just no. all the wind dropped out of him and he's desperately like on the ground trying to get a sucking breath and I kind of realized at this point we don't know what we're doing but I was in too deep <laughs> uh, so, so you know after a while we're just standing there we're looking at this guy dying on the ground and we're like oh, what do we do what do we do <laughs> it's like the Brian Regan <laughs> joke of the kids one falls and you're just like oh, oh, get some leaves <laughs> <laughs> oh god yeah but put those on oh oh is yeah. that helping yeah 100 percent. it's it's exactly like that. but he gets up like he's, he's he gets up and he plays it off like oh, i'm fine but clearly his ribs are broken like oh, straight up his ribs are broken god. and so he gets up he's like i, th I think i i think i need uh, i think i'm good for today guys i, I think I, I know, i'm gonna go lay down <laughs> it's just like because that's the fix Jeez. of everything you just go lay down you know this is like college we don't have health insurance or anything. I think this is pre-Obamacare. Like, we're not covered under our parents' plans at this moment. Like, we don't have the money to take care of a broken bone. So, like, we're just gonna go uh, sleep it off. I'm pretty sure a long <laughs> rest fixes almost anything. <laughs> yeah, yeah it just depends on the length of the rest, right? Yeah. yeah. It's like D&D. &D. You take a long rest, you go back to full health. Yeah, so it's like he stumbles off and we're watching him. We watch him walk away for, like, five minutes because it's just this <laughs> long stretch of path and he's going real slow and and even if he wanted to go to the medical facility it's on the other side of campus oh, no. <laughs> so we're watching him stumble away about the time he disappears out of view behind you know those hills in like the bob you know no one cares that there's there's these like grassy hills Since that is a very hilly campus yeah yeah i know and so he disappears around the corner and we're just like we look at each other we're like all right let's keep going guys you know, it's just like <laughs> And so we go over to this building. It's it's DAP for those who don't know. It's like design, architecture, art, and planning. Planning. That's the one. And so uh, it's it's got interesting architecture, which is apparently perfect for uh, parkour. Yeah. And uh, so design, art, architecture, and parkour. And so at this point, my spine has been hurting because at first it didn't hurt, and then it started hurting. And Bob, you know, like. I don't know if you remember, I don't know if I ever mentioned this to you, but every time I would go to the gym after this and I would do an exercise that worked my spine, I would suddenly like hit the ground with crippling pain. Oh. Um, which afterwards, not even crippling pain, it was like a weird neurological thing where suddenly I got unbelievably nauseous and like my hands started like shaking and I had to just like go to the bathroom and lay on the floor in a stall and just like wait until I would be okay. And you know, at the time I never connected the dots to me falling on my ass and possibly breaking something in my spine to this weird thing where I'd go to the gym and work my spine and I would be in horrible agony. Anyway. 
didn't have time to go there. Uh, just a quick uh, reminder, everyone, like we're talking about these things and laughing about these things. Please don't do any of this dumb shit we're about to talk about and have talked about. Oh, yeah, this is why it's a hold my beer moment. It's just like, you don't PSA. do this shit. Don't do it. Don't go to an amateur parkour class with just like three buddies and jump around a parking garage. Like, uh, if, you, if your first parkour adventure is dropping from a two-story parking garage, uh, number one, you're me, and number two, you're doing it wrong. I mean, so, yes, I 100% uh, that's correct. You need to, like, learn how to do the simple stuff with before it's from you know, death defying heights. Yeah. Was there any part of you that showed up to that and saw that it was pretty informal and so, and everyone started doing stuff and you were like, Ooh, I don't, I don't know. And then guys started jumping off the second story thing. And you, did you just look at it and be like, all right, let's go, man. Or was there any part of you that was like, maybe don't, I'll take the stairs. No, nah, man. I wanted to be cool. I, didn't, I wanted friends. <laughs> oh, man. No, I mean, it's it's literally like that. And it sucks to say it, but just like, nah, man, you don't want to you know, act like a wimp in front of, in front of everyone. That's such a dangerous mindset. That's what leads to all this dumb shit. It is. It is. That's the exact same mindset. And like, there's more dumb shit on the way because we get too dap and we start climbing up. And like, at this point, you know, I'm reaching up and trying to pull myself up. And, you know, I'm not, I'm not weak, but it was like, there was one part where it was pulling up again to a second story thing. And I'm like, I didn't know if I could pull myself up all the way. And they weren't helping because they were already like running ahead of me, <laughs> like jumping over shit. And I'm like, I'm hanging from a, a, a railing and I'm just like, oh, God. Oh, 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 oh this is, uh, and and then I managed to get like the crazy adrenaline strength and pull myself up. And so we get to the roof. We get to the roof of DAP. Somehow we made up. And it's like not a short building. It's not an incredibly tall building. I think it's like three stories up on the roof. It's tall enough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then um, we hear sirens when we're up on the roof. And you know, Cincinnati, there's plenty of sirens, but for some reason in our brain, we're like, they're coming for us. <laughs> they found out. <laughs> we went into the forbidden zone. And like, you know, we're like, they're gonna get us on this roof. We've committed horrible crimes. So we all panic, right? So we panic and we run off and uh, we go back a different way and we drop down a ledge. And then again, they drop down from this second story ledge onto this grassy part. And it's like a hurry now. There's no time to like, <laughs> Debate about it. So I find myself once again hanging by one hand from a second story ledge looking down. But in my mind, in my mind at this moment, I'm like, okay, I went backwards that last time. I'll go forwards this time. I know what my mistake was. <laughs> and so I drop and I'm like, forward, forward, forward. And then roll. I saw them roll on like their shoulder. And so my legs hit the ground. I go forward. And I put 100% of my weight right onto my shoulder, and I don't move. And it's just like, I hit the ground, my shoulder just... Doosh. It's like, God if you just imagine someone just dropped in the fetal position onto the ground from two stories. It's like, well, thank God you did it the right way that time. Yeah, thank God you rolled forward, <laughs> saved it. You'd think that I would have, like, after the first fall, like, okay, guys, can you show me how to do this roll thing? Because it's clear that I don't know. No, that's not cool. That's not cool. <laughs> you gotta be cool. And I can't believe they didn't say, like, do you want, like, to practice or anything? Do you want us to, like, teach you? It's like, no, I must have made a mistake. I'm a parkour expert, and that was just a flub. I hope they lost their parkour teaching license after this. <laughs> <laughs> I so like like I I hit the ground and I'm just like I like am down there for a while I'm uh, for a while and I'm like uh, 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 okay I'm okay I'm okay I'm okay and I look up and they're gone. <laughs> <laughs> Well, they taught you, didn't they? <laughs> they freaking destroyed my body and then bail. <laughs> I think the only way that could be better at all is if you look up and there's like two cops just standing there. Just like, we know where you were. That's the forbidden roof. This just the goes to show you guys, you do dumb shit, you get friends for life. 
play dumb games, get dumb prizes, right? Yeah, man. And I, I just remember I the long walk because Bob, you know, Dap is literally on the other side. No, from- that's like a twenty minute walk away from our dorm, at least. Yeah, and especially when I like my shoulder is like, <laughs> and my shoulder was fucked up for years after that. Yeah, well, that's the main thing I remembered when you said you broke your ass. I didn't even remember that. I remember your shoulder was absolutely destroyed. Yes. Ab- and and I didn't go to a doctor or oh, anything. God, no, I just lived no. with not being able to lift my arm above my neckline on my left side. God, if you'd gotten help and you weren't in miserable pain the rest of your life, what a loser you would have been. Which I, I don't remember. So we lived in a dorm room together freshman year of college. Was that before or after your bed was lofted? So you um, had to climb into bed every night. This was way before. This is okay. like way before. God, do we, I could tell that. It's just oh, like that, that was such. A, I can't believe we survived that. That's we have to tell that story now. The lofting the bed story because it's so fucked. Oh my god! I'll kick it off and then you take it over. Like so, it's back from winter break, right? So we each went our separate ways, and I think we became good friends in the first uh, quarter. At that point, we were gaming a lot, playing like a dark yeah. hero. Like we were friends and at like, that point. What year was this? Like freshman year, two thousand and seven. Freshman year, yeah, yeah, college. Yeah. So this would have been January two thousand eight when this this next story and the parkouring also happened at the same time, right? Oh yeah, no parkour was in the fall, right when I got there. I was like, hey, I'm gonna get out there and I'm gonna try things, and then I learned my lesson to never go outside. <laughs> never tried anything again. <laughs> I Fuck really that. didn't. I didn't try anything. We're going from like September fast forward straight to January. Got it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so I come in from winter break. I, I open the door, and you know Bob's there, and I'm just like. <sighs> Let's loft the beds. <laughs> like, I don't think I said hello first. I think I, like, walked in the door and was like, you want to loft? The, you want to put the beds in on, on top? Bunk them? You want to bunk the beds? And it's just like... Well, we'd have so much more room for activities that way. I know. God, that movie hadn't even come out. I know. <laughs> That's exactly what we were doing. We wanted room for activities. We did. That's exactly what we wanted. I know. <laughs> <laughs> like we need more space for when people come over yeah. when we have all these parties. Obviously, <laughs> we're cool guys. You guys throw a lot of parties after this. Yeah, oh, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. God, we definitely threw at least so one. <laughs> <laughs> we threw, we did throw one. <laughs> God. <laughs> Great. I can't All wait right. to hear how worth it this was. Oh, yeah. But I'll take over. So Mark enters. And so our current setup, the way we had it set up, because we didn't know each other going in, we basically split the room in half, right? The way a lot of dorm rooms do it when you're with a stranger. Yeah. One half was mine. One half was Mark. So on each half, there's like a bed. Underneath the bed, you can fit. There's a dresser and you use some storage. And then you have a desk and you have like a wardrobe. Yeah. So there's the middle of the room, but it's not that big of a room. Like, if we were standing shoulder to shoulder, we'd probably take up the whole width of the center of that room. Yeah. So, if you bunk one bed on top of the other, you get, like, you know, a corner of the room. You get that whole corner for whatever you want. Yeah. Put both the dressers under the same bed, store stuff in your wardrobe, easy peasy. But the way the beds are supposed to go together when you bunk them, you're supposed to, one lower the height of the bed that goes on top because when they're on the floor the bed is like all the way up on the highest setting it can go right so you can put stuff under it okay but if you leave it like that and then put it on top of another bed there's like maybe a foot between the bed (laughs) and the ceiling yeah. (laughs) yeah really like legitimately so you're supposed to change that but that required like tools or i don't know knowledge we didn't know how to do that so we didn't do that of course not so we just took mark's bed and we're just like put it the fuck up there the yeah. other thing about bunking it was a whole system the other thing about this is other than the fact that you're supposed to one ask for permission and two ask for help from adults you're supposed to have these metal pins yeah. so you stack one on top of the other right and they're they're not like <laughs> large legs there's supposed to be a thick metal pin in each of the four legs they stick into the bottom of the top bed that lock it in place so yeah. they, they can't slip off. That seems crucially important, <laughs> sure right? Sure does. It's very important. So we're looking at this and we're like, yeah, I don't think we need, I don't, we can't adjust your bed. I think, and Mark is like, that's fine. That's fine. I'll sleep up high. Good air up high. It'll be fine. <laughs> Good air. Like, we get past that hurdle and then we're looking and we're like, all right, metal pins, metal pins. We don't have metal pins. I don't want to go talk. If we ask an RA if we can do this, they'll probably be like, no, don't do that. Until you have to fill out a form or something. We don't want to do that shit. So what can we use in place of metal pins? 
And I don't know. I think it was you, Mark. I got yeah, to give you credit me. where it's due. <laughs> We're sitting there like brainstorming. And Mark like goes into his wardrobe where his clothes hang up and stuff and turns back to me with a pair of scissors <laughs> and a plastic clothes hanger. <laughs> and is like, if we just snip this straight part of this clothes hanger, it's like metal pins. <laughs> it was the perfect size. It fit perfectly it was the right diameter it has i'm pretty sure plastic clothes hangers you can snap no. with your bare hands have the same tensile and sheer strength as metal pins no. so like yeah he looks at me and of course he holds up the scissors and then the thing and i look at him and i'm like perfect <laughs> how big do you think they need to be let's do this no hesitation at all oh jesus yeah. oh. and my favorite part of this whole thing we trim them to the length we think they need to be we set them they're not exactly the same length we're not measurers okay we're doers yeah no why would you bother making sure they were even and uh we eyeball them to the same ish length set them all in we hoist the bed up really precariously uh -huh. set it on the pins one of the four pins was like half an inch longer than the other ones. <laughs> and it was half an inch too long. Yep. <laughs> so the bed, the weight of that corner of Mark's bunked bed, which is now like 10 feet off the ground, is not supported on the leg of the bed sitting on the top of the bottom bed. The weight of that bed is sitting on the plastic clothes hanger. And there's like a gap between the foot of the bed and what it's supposed to be sitting on. And we look at that and it's like, Ah, oh, shit. It's too long, huh? Well, I suppose we could take it back down and trim that plastic so everything sits. And we sort of like, I don't remember the conversation, but we looked at it for maybe a second, like 10 <laughs> seconds total. And then Mark was just like, ah, fuck it. <laughs> of course. <yeah. laughs> and just climbed up. And so for the entire rest of that school year, yeah. Mark's bunk bed, one quarter of the legs was supported by like a, a quarter inch thick piece of plastic. You should be fucking dead. <laughs> I when know. nothing happened, nothing bad happened. Totally fine. Really? Well, something did happen. i like, okay, well, so you got oh, okay. You well. got to understand that, like, when I climbed in here, I didn't want to tell Bob that I didn't have a lot of room. You don't admit defeat. But let me just say, if I sneezed while I was laying in bed, I would have broken my nose. Like, I would <laughs> go forward a couple inches and I smack into the ceiling. <laughs> But I get up there, I'm like, oh, it's cozy. Like, this is why, like, I like the, the tour bunks, just like, because it was like a coffin. So in an odd way, I did like it. But then I remember, like, a few days after we did this, one morning, my alarm goes off or whatever. It's, like, early. And I'm like, okay, I got to get out of bed. And I had forgotten that I was in a bunk. And so I, like, in a daze, it's dark. I, like, climb out of bed, and just suddenly I'm falling. <laughs> And Bob, you gotta tell, like, what did this, what did you think? Like, I know you were asleep, you woke it up, but I was like, I fall, and I don't remember what happened, and then I was on the ground. <laughs> I mean, so I was really asleep. I'm not a morning person. I wake up super slowly. So I was laying in bed, mostly asleep, and it was like, if you imagine what it would look like in a cartoon, yeah. If you're you're in an office building in a window office and somebody has leaped out of a window above yours and yeah. they come flying by your window like they're parachuting or something. <laughs> like I'm just laying in bed and I just see Mark just like, ooh, whoa. <laughs> and then Mark's just on the floor and I don't even know if I rolled over. Like I saw that and then I heard you keep moving and I was just like, oh, he's fine. I think you bubbled like, yeah, okay. And I'm like, yeah, okay. After I go, <laughs> <laughs> you okay? But you you really yeah. like rolled out like you were just gonna put your foot on the floor. So the way you fell was just like ooh, tumbling, <laughs> like whoa, whoa, fuck. Yeah, God. Uh, but that was the only time I made that mistake. So um, it was good. Yeah. After that, like I remember laying in the bed and I could hear everything in the like dorm above me. And it was like I heard people jumping around, like partying. I heard people have sex, and I'm just like. Worth it. We have so much room for activity. <laughs> Somebody who was in one of the few dorms, like right above us, yeah. had so much sex freshman year. I know. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> I like not to be super crass, and I have no idea who they were, but they fucked. I know. I know. <laughs> God damn. Mark was yeah. like nose deep in their fucking sex. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mark is like, maybe that's why he liked it. Mark is like six inches away, just like, can you smell stuff through through cinder block walls? 
Ah. I was like, hey, good job, buddy. You got this. <laughs> Give him a pat hey, way to go, pal. <laughs> <laughs> You're laying there trying to sleep. Finally, like the squeaking stops, and the guy is like, oh, yeah, nice. Good night, Christy. Good night, Mark. And you're like, good night. Okay. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> I reach up, give him a shoulder rub after he's <laughs> way to go, pal. <laughs> Good night. Mm. On a first name basis because your nose is so deep in their shit. Okay, well, that story, which was just a spinoff of your story, is possibly yeah. better than the one I have. But I do oh, have... God damn. I've got my very own personal hold my beer moment i guess go for it i want to hear it i don't know did you have any more did you want to hit anything else no no that's it for now i mean our whole <sighs> yeah, freshman year could just be nothing but these kinds of things but yeah. <laughs> this so many fucking moments. be better than them everyone just so so fucking stupid we're so stupid <laughs> we are <laughs> yeah. so no so stupid. i do i did want to say i do remember so i remember the parkour thing and I remember, mostly what I remember is when you came back, then you were really, like, hurt at that point. And so yeah. uh, you kind of just, like, laid down and tried to relax. We did our separate things. But I remember thinking to myself, like, this fucking dude has his Mirror's Edge outfit on to go parkouring. <laughs> did you get a special outfit for that? Or did you just have clothes? Because I swear to God. I had, like, gloves. I got gloves. You had fingerless gloves. Yeah, yeah, fingerless gloves. You had, like, gloves. one of those asymmetrical, like, zip hoodies, and you had, like, a cross-shoulder bag or oh, something. God, like, you came back, and I was like, oh, this is fucking oh, embarrassing. Man. Look, I, these are details I didn't want. You looked like you were going to do parkour, but I, I remember just thinking, like, man, fuck, this dude loves parkour. He's got the whole outfit and everything. <laughs> God. God damn. <laughs> oh, God, I just wanted to look like I fit the part. You know, I didn't want Walking, like, I don't know what I'm doing. Like, oh, yeah, I know what I'm doing. Like, uh, like I, I fucking went out and got a parkour cosplay outfit so that people would believe that I know. And then you just <laughs> fell on your ass, fell on your shoulder. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. Oh, That's God. That's commitment, man. No, those are details I wish not to have uh, been revealed, but it's okay. It's cool. I love the visual of you starting to roll both times and then just getting fucking planted and not being able to roll oh. at all. Yeah, that's it's so funny. Yeah, it's uh, hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> It is That's funny now because you're okay, dude. I, I have no idea right? if I'm gonna have like long term spinal issues from that. Like, who fucking knows? I'm probably okay at this point. I haven't had any pain. Did you ever see the guy that like took five minutes to walk away again? N no. Oh, he definitely died. <laughs> He died. He he died in his sleep in his dorm room. One hundred percent. I didn't even think about it. I was so focused on me. I didn't even. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, probably the rest of those guys never saw you again either. They're out there right now, like, having a beer, like, really shakily, like, you remember those two guys that died in college? <laughs> we should have never fucking gotten into parkour, man. God damn it. Those are the sixth and seventh guys we killed trying to teach people parkour. We always go to the second story too early. Fuck. God. Oh, my God. Okay. My story. All right. The title of my story is The Longest, the longest Coldest, coldest Shittiest Night. night. <laughs> okay, The Longest, All Coldest, right. Shittiest Night. Yes. So, something people may not know about me. When I was in college, I was a bit of a doer myself. Not mm -hmm. parkour. But uh, I thought it'd be really cool at some point. I found this motorcycle on Craigslist for real cheap. Didn't question why it was real cheap. Just real cheap. And I was like, yeah, you know what? That's cool. I like stuff that has motors. I like cars and go-karts. So probably a motorcycle fits right in with that. So I bought a motorcycle on Craigslist for cash. You remember how much it was? It's like 700 bucks Okay. for a fully functioning. It was a Honda CX-500. It's actually a really great motorcycle. 1978 Honda CX-500. Very interesting motorcycle. Interesting engine. Interesting drivetrain. The way I learned to ride was the guy who I was buying it from, was some random middle-aged dude in Kentucky, I messaged him and I was like, I got the cash. I can buy it. And he was like, cool, cool, cool. Do you, uh, you want to come pick it up and ride it home? And my second message to him was like, oh, you know, I've never actually ridden a motorcycle. I probably shouldn't ride it on the highway. And this adult who, let me say, maybe should have thought better of this, didn't say like, oh, I don't know if I can sell it to you, young, young man who's never done this before. He was like, oh, it's no problem. I can teach you. <laughs> <laughs> which sure yeah so i meet him in a church parking lot and he teaches me how to ride luckily i my car was a manual transmission so i understood how a clutch worked because motorcycles by and large are manual transmissions i learned pretty quick i'm honestly i'm good at like driving and riding stuff I'm good at go-karts i like cars 
It was easy. But I met him for 45 minutes in a church parking lot and then handed him 700 bucks cash. It was like nighttime, which I hadn't considered. I had a friend drop me off. I met him and then I rode from Newport, Kentucky back to where I lived right by the University of Cincinnati, which is like, you know, a half hour ride through complex downtown highways through the heart of Cincinnati where you have to go uh, through some complicated interchanges and all this stuff. I actually got home no problem. Literally by sheer luck and dumb idiocy, I got home. So I, now I had a motorcycle and I, I went and I got my license and I, well, I got my temporary license so I could learn and I registered it and all this stuff. I did the whole thing and I got body armor and I got a helmet. I didn't have those things. I had a helmet, but I didn't have the good ones when I rode it home. And I was like, all right, I'm a motorcycle guy now. I rode this thing to school because you could park on campus motorcycles for yeah. free. I rode this thing to work because it's cool. I rode this thing everywhere. And then I was in a band at the time because I was a cool guy. And uh, we got a gig at Ohio University, which is in Athens, Ohio, which is not close to Cincinnati. It's a hike. Mm -hmm. That was a bit of a hike. And I didn't know that. And I was like, the drummer has to drive his big station wagon. I'll have him take my instrument and I'll just ride my motorcycle to this gig, right? I'll park right out front of the bar we're playing at and it'll be super cool. And uh, I didn't think about the fact that this gig was in spring, early spring. It's not that warm in Ohio in early spring. And uh, <laughs> I didn't think about the fact that I was going to be traveling after I had a class I had to do and then I was going to leave in the afternoon. So I was traveling afternoon to evening. It gets down to like, I don't know. 40 degrees maybe 50 degrees at the lowest depending on the time of year i don't remember exactly and i thought to myself i know how to get to ohio university you just hop on 32 east right you take whatever 275 whatever you want get to 32 east and it's like an hour away right mm -hmm. and you just go to ohio university this was sort of in the days before you just pull your phone out and it tells you this was maybe in like 2008 2009 maybe so i didn't check i have it in front of me if you take the Google Maps route from University of Cincinnati to Ohio University, it's approximately two hours and 40 minutes. Yeah, it's like a two and a, two and a half to three hour drive. Yeah. And I have all my motorcycle gear at this point. I have a nice jacket with Kevlar armor in it in case I fall. I have a good highly rated helmet. I spent more on my safety gear than I spent on my motorcycle. I was being responsible. And I left for Athens at like maybe three in the afternoon. Not super cold in the 60s maybe. The thing I didn't understand until the moment I got on the highway and the next two and a half hours of riding <laughs> is that if it's like 60 degrees outside ambient, you know, just that's the temperature. If you're going 70 miles an hour on a motorcycle, that wind feels like 40 degrees. Yeah. And if it's like 40 degrees <laughs> and if the sun is going down, because you're an idiot and you're in the middle of nowhere because Ohio is an abyss with five cities in it. Yeah. <laughs> it's you know, 40 degrees outside feels like 20 degrees or lower on your poor hands that have literally no protection on them except mesh gloves. Yeah. So I leave and like on my way out of Cincinnati, the first maybe 40 minutes is like, whew, chilly, but that's cool. Like, it's cool. I'm on the motorcycle. It's cool. And the sun starts going lower and lower. The temperature starts edging down. And it reaches a point at like an hour or an hour and a half in. It reached a point where I was like, okay, this is cold. Like, fuck. Like, do I turn back? Mm -hmm. like, well, but I have the gig. I have to be there. We play a gig at like 9 p.m. or something, right? So I have to be there. I have to get dinner. Like, I can't turn back. Can't stop. Committed at this point. Got to be there for the boys. Got to show up. Got to get paid for this gig. Got to have some beers with the boys. <laughs> and it gets, so like an hour and a half in, like really cold. Like, imagine it's windy. It's 70 mile an hour winds and it's freezing out. And my hands are just going numb, which is not great on a motorcycle. You really need to be able to move all of your fingers <laughs> to do all the parts of a motorcycle. I didn't even think about that. Like, yeah, if your hands don't work, you can't work the levers. You can't do anything. You kind of just kind of freeze in place. <laughs> yeah. My feet start to go numb, which is the only other thing you have to work the controls. You need to, you need both hands, both feet to do all the parts of a motorcycle to shift and act and work the brakes yeah. and to not fall over. Yeah. When you stop, I start to get so cold and so miserable. My head is down trying to keep the air from blowing up into my helmet because it's a closed helmet but doesn't have a closed neck. And it's like blowing down my shirt, it's blowing up my sleeves. <laughs> I'm dying. I'm shivering. And I'm in the middle of nowhere. And I'm like not thinking about anything other than like wiggle your fingers, wiggle your toes, don't freeze to death. And then suddenly 
in the middle of nowhere, darkness. It's literally just me with my 30 or 40 year old motorcycle. And it just goes, <laughs> it dies. I'm 70 miles an hour. Engine cuts out. Jesus. Not a soul in sight. It's basically dark at this point. I pull off to the side of the road, kick the stand down and I'm standing next to it. Like, <sighs> It. Like, what do I even do? Like, I haven't seen a gas station in like half an hour. I guess I walk forward and see what happens. <laughs> it strikes me at this point because I'm an idiot. Motorcycles generally have a main fuel tank and then like an auxiliary tank that's like an extra gallon or half gallon or something. Mm. So when you run out of your main tank, you switch to your auxiliary tank and that's your signal like, get some gas. That's the like e -li empty light turning on, right? Mm, yeah. But I didn't know that. I stood there for like half an hour. It's getting later and colder. I'm shivering. I call a buddy. I call my dad and he's like, I've never, I haven't had a motorcycle. You fucking idiot. Why would I <laughs> don't have a motorcycle? That's my, <laughs> that's my solution. Finally, it strikes me like, oh, you know what? And my 40 minute motorcycle lesson, he showed me there's a little switch petcock to turn it to the auxiliary tank. I wonder, yeah. And I turn that and it starts back up. Now it's like totally dark out, but at least I'm moving yeah. and continuing to freeze. The next hour of the trip, I pulled off at every gas station just to go inside <laughs> and buy something hot and buy another pair of gloves or a shirt <laughs> or whatever the fuck they had. It's gas stations in the middle of nowhere, right? But like I get to the first one, they have like work gloves and I'm like, yeah, stretch that shit on over my motorcycle gloves. And they have like dumb, stupid NASCAR t-shirts or something. And I'm like, yeah, whatever, biggest one you got, put it on. I'm like layering. I put on all the clothes I had on my backpack because I packed for like two nights. The idea is I'm going to this gig and I'm going to drive up to Columbus to see my parents and show them my cool motorcycle. Yeah. They'll love that. <laughs> and then I'll drive back to school and um, I put on all my clothes, two pairs of pants, all the socks, everything I've got. I head back out after the first gas station. No effect whatsoever. In fact, it's way worse because I was just inside for like 20 minutes yeah. and it's kind of warm. And, you know, you you get tingly, your fingers tingle, your skin is like itchy. Yeah. I get back on the bike. Now I'm itchy and fucking cold <laughs> as hell. Like, just miserable. Every gas station I see, I stop just to go have a cup of coffee. I hold the cup of coffee in my hands, and then I throw it away because I don't even drink coffee because I'm a college kid. <laughs> I lost feeling, like, all the way up my arms and legs. Uh -huh. Finally, one of the last stops I make, again, thinking this would be, like, an hour-long bike ride. I'm, like, two hours in, stopping every time. So what should be two hours and 40 minutes of drive time it took me four hours total to complete with all the stops. The last or second to last stop I make, I don't remember for sure. I'm so numb. I get off the, the state route. I park up, I go inside. I'm like warming up my hands. My phone is dying because at this point in human history, phone batteries didn't last that long because it was when smartphones were a thing, but they sucked. Yeah. So my phone is like dying. Like if I crash, that's it. I'm dead. That's how I die. <laughs> and uh, I'm super numb. Being inside doesn't even help. On my way out, I get on my bike. I can't feel my arms and legs still. And I'm by myself at this point, and I'm just going to pull back onto the highway and just try and get to Athens. Just go for it. And I can't feel my feet. And I laid my own motorcycle down on my own leg. Oh, no. Because I couldn't feel my arms and legs. I literally pulled up to turn onto the street and just put my feet out and was like, all right, I'll just look for traffic. And suddenly I'm just falling over. Yeah. And I have no control. I think I hurt my leg, but I couldn't feel it. I laid the bike down onto my leg. Scratch the shit out of my bike. Scratch my fancy new helmet. Everything hurts. Everything's numb. Fuck. I eventually got there, drank so much beer because everything hurt and was cold forever. Yeah. Played a gig. I don't remember the gig. I only remember the cold. But that had to be the coldest, longest, most miserable four hours of my entire life. <laughs> and like... I can't believe I survived. There were literally moments where it was me in the middle of woods, pitch black, on a highway, on a motorcycle, feeling like I was about to freeze to death and fall over. Damn. Motorcycles are cool, right? How many yeah, more trips did you make on that motorcycle? I actually used it for a while after that, but I never again did I do a road trip on it. Mm -hmm. I rode it around campus, and I zipped from work to school and whatever. How was the trip back? Well, so the rest of it was during the day. Okay. The The plan was I had the gig that night. The next morning I woke up. My buddy actually drove down from Columbus to see the gig and hang out. 
and he drove in a car. So I sort of followed him on the highway as like a little bit of a windbreak. And it was in the daytime sun. It was cold. Like it was still only you know, maybe 60 degrees out. So it's chilly, but it's totally bearable. Yeah. And I had my buddy with me in his car. If anything happened, we got to Columbus. No problem. The trip home, it was actually kind of annoying because there's a lot of traffic because of construction, which is just really boring on a motorcycle because there's no like radio. And you can't relax. You're just sitting on a motorcycle that's sort of overheating on the highway. Anyway, it's fine. Compared to the trip, the first leg of the trip, joyous, pleasurable even. (laughs) But that fucking night on Highway 32, trying to get to goddamn Ohio University, I've never gone back and I never will. Fuck you, Athens. (laughs) The lesson learned is screw Athens, Ohio. I blame them completely for being so far away from Cincinnati. Yeah. God damn it. Oh, so you took 32. That's like the longest possible route, according to this. No, there's not a, what do you mean? There's not a shorter route. What's the shorter route? Yeah, what's the shorter route? So looking at this, the shorter route's to take 71 north and then take 35 and 50 east. Uh-huh. That's not shorter. Time-wise, not mileage-wise. I'm looking at time, not mileage. Mm. <laughs> this guy. He didn't even know. He doesn't even know. No, I mean... Plus, uh, if that's looking from where you live, then maybe, but... No, it's from University of Cincinnati. Ah, uh, nah. Nah, <laughs> nah. Nah. <laughs> nah. I'm just you saying, know. man. I'm just saying. Nah, man. Look, well, that's the thing, though. I didn't even check. I knew how to get there back in the days when you just knew, like, oh, I take 71 to get to Columbus, and I take 32 to go to Athens. I didn't even fucking look. I didn't have GPS. I didn't have printed out map quest directions or anything. I just was like, yeah, I know where that is and went, which I can't imagine doing right now as an adult. And I know where things are. Who does that? I would never do that. You do that, Mark, actually, don't you? Yeah, I do that. that. Of course I do that. (laughs) Fucking psychopath. What do you mean? What if you go the wrong way? What if I don't go the wrong way? What if you think of the wrong thing? No, I know the way. What if you drive an hour in the wrong direction? I look at the stars. I guide my way. No, I like, I I don't know. I've always (laughs) been good at directions. I can't, I can't help it. I just know. You and your car are like, oh man, I could use this like fancy map overlay, but ah, the star, there's the North Star. I know where I'm at. (laughs) Perfect. I know how to get to, I don't know, Westdale, LA. I'll just look at the stars. I don't know. It's like when I'm driving, I I, I don't want to look at a map. Like that's why it's kind of like why I always orient maps north because then I have a fixed point of reference and I kind of know things, but I'm always looking at landmarks and I'm trying to, you know, trying to gauge where I am, always trying to like get memorable locations and feel out which turns I'm making. I don't know. I think it harkens back to like the type of games I played when I was a kid, you know, uh, I would always just like, I loved figuring out the layouts of maps and stuff like that and kind of like putting them in my head so I would always remember them and I could know where secrets were and I would replay games a lot, so... I don't know. I don't know, man. It's concerning. Yeah, probably. Hmm. I will say, being a passenger in a car that you're driving, like when you've picked me up from LAX when I visit and stuff before, Mm -hmm. you always look like you know where you're going, but it always feels like I just got into a taxi. (laughs) Not an Uber, a taxi. And I was like, yeah, take me to, you know, take me to Studio City or something. And Mm -hmm. the guy's like, ah, okay. Yeah, okay. (laughs) Studio City doesn't put anything in. And we just start driving. And the whole time I'm just like, "He, he probably know. He knows, right? He wouldn't just be driving somewhere. He knows. Knows how to make that extra cash. Because sometimes when you're driving, Mark, you do, you like look around and you're like, oh, oh, no. Okay. No, I know where we are. (laughs) And everyone in the car is kind of like, huh? This is not a good time. We've been driving for two hours. What do you mean? Uh I didn't know this was the kind of response I was getting in the backseat of my own car. Like everyone's questioning my every move. It's just a little (laughs) unnerving. It's unnerving. It's perfectly nerving. Get your nerves back. It's your fault, not mine. I have no nerves. Do you guys know Jesse, our friend Jesse? Yeah, I do. Yeah. You've met him, right? I'm familiar. Okay. So he and a friend went down to like, I think Mount Adams and went drinking a couple years back now. And uh, I guess they called a taxi or an Uber afterward. And they were so drunk that they actually passed out in the back of the taxi on the way home. And so mm-hmm. the fucking driver, instead of taking them home, does the whole 275 loop <laughs> to increase their fare. Wow. Oh my God. Oh my God. And they wake up like an hour, hour and a half into like what should be like a 30 minute ride. <laughs> and they're just like, yeah, pull off here. And they have to pay this exorbitant tax fucking fee. And then their dad, I think Jesse's dad came to pick him up. Oh, they paid it? 
fuck that. Oh my god. I would be on the phone or the chat or whatever. I would not pay for that shit. Ugh. Well, they were drunk as fuck, so I don't think they were thinking very well at that moment. Huh. That's nuts. But yeah, dude fucking drove them around the loop to increase their fare to... So yeah, a lot of them do know where they're going. Oh, that's so scummy. That's why anytime I get into an Uber or a cab, I also look up the directions to make sure they're taking the fastest route. And if they're not, mm. I'm like, hey, actually, you should get on here. Make it a little bit faster. <laughs> I'm that guy. Wow. You're wow. just the worst kind of passenger. Huh? <laughs> to be fair, they've always pretty much, I've never actually had to do it, but I'm always ready. I question Mark, yeah. but never once did I GPS him, okay? Mm. I mm. let him do it. Well, not Mark, because Mark doesn't charge a fare for us to go somewhere. I don't care if Mark ends up in the wrong spot. I just want to have quality time. Quality time. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I mean, in LA, like, the cab drivers, I feel like, are in such a hurry to get their next fare because they're always busy. Well, probably not now as much. Normally, Uber drivers. That they take all the middle, like, inner roads in LA, and that's the fucking worst. Like, I've had, like, a ride back from LAX to where I was living before, and uh, it's, it, like, GPS told them to take a left turn across a six-lane road. Oh, <laughs> it's God. Just, it's literally, like, looking left, looking and right i'm gonna inch out into traffic oh, they'll God. stop you just have people like looking at you like jesus christ this fucking thing and then like behind you like more cars are trying to like oh my chance oh we have a leader <laughs> and then you know, oh, huge traffic. and i'm sitting in the passenger seat and i'm just like eh, eh, no please not this. <laughs> anything but this that's the worst too i've been my least favorite type of Uber experience is when you're in one of those cars that's in a left turn lane where it's just hopeless like that yeah but you're one of the back ones and there's like a tiny gap and the one car at the front is like, this is my chance. And the next six cars are just like, yes, our chance. <laughs> and, and they just pull out into oncoming traffic and you're like, ah, yeah. I should never sit on the passenger side. Holy fuck. <laughs> were you guys in the Uber in Boston where we made the mistake of telling the dude we were in a hurry and he drove down the double yellow line with a finger, oh, middle I finger out each that. window the oh whole fucking God. way. And then he demanded us give him like a $30 tip before we were allowed to get out. <sighs> Dude, Ubers in Boston are terrifying. Oh. The hell Never Boston. tell one you're in a hurry, ever. Oh yeah, it's a challenge. Anyway, any final thoughts before I uh, award points and wrap this one up? No, but we should remember for a future episode to do like dumb childhood stories and just a whole episode on all the freshman year escapades that Bob and I had. Or... <laughs> yeah. This is like, good God. Well, this is just Hold My <sighs> Beer Part 1, then. We'll have a follow-up coming sometime down the line. Oh, man. Okay, how do I want to award points here? Mm. Mm -hmm. Bob, you, you tell stories so good. I'm just going to give you a thousand points for being a good storyteller. All right. Um, you got 14 for being a little bit late on the title. Mark, you got 77 mm -hmm. points. Uh-huh. Hmm. I don't know. I feel like Mark told a story and then led to a second story that Bob helped with, but it was still like Mark drove a lot of conversation today. So however many points Mark needs to win by one point, that's how many points I award. Mark, you win. <laughs> I eked the victory out. You eked it out. Just by barely. being the dumbest one in the call, you win. Congratulations. <laughs> I don't do any math or anything. God damn it. Thanks, God. man. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> I'll take the win. I feel like I really made the bunk bed story by telling my part of it, but that's fine. <laughs> that's that's okay. Okay. I, hey, I was like, we should make that collaborative. It was it together, but you know. To be fair, it was Mark's nose in the sex and his body at risk on the coat hangers. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> and him that fell out after breaking his shoulder and his ass already. <laughs> That was a hell of a year. A lot of yeah. a lot of stuff that year, man. Oh, a yeah. lot of falling. Yeah, a lot of falling for me. That's kind of like a habit in my life. Hey, I fell out of my much lower bed too, and that was pretty scary. So, <laughs> <laughs> foot off the ground versus like eight feet. Hey, like five feet, four feet off the ground, four or five. Maybe even six. I don't know. I'm stunned that I didn't get hurt. Like, because it didn't hurt at all. Like, I knocked the TV over. I fell like my shoulder <laughs> landed on the fridge. Like, I landed perfectly in that little gap in between your bed and the fridge. And it was like there was a stool there. It was like... <laughs> You should have absolutely broken your neck on the oh TV God, or yeah. the fridge or something because you shouldn't have lived. You <laughs> I should shouldn't be dead. have lived through a lot of things freshman year. We should both be dead. Moral of the story, <laughs> yeah, don't do dumb shit out there. Be smarter than they were. Yeah, Looking we at you, college freshman. <laughs> yeah, this, this podcast is a cautionary tale if ever there was one. <laughs> Please literally don't do this dumb shit. We will not be held responsible for any dumb shit you decide to do, but don't do it. Yeah, we refuse. We refuse, we refuse. to be held responsible. Just like Mark's <laughs> still not responsible for his actions, we won't be responsible for yours. 100%.
All right. Well, thank you guys all for listening to Distractable brought to you by Wood Elf. Make sure you subscribe so you can listen to the podcast anywhere and everywhere it is. Follow Wood Elf Media for the latest updates. Big thank you to Mark and Bob for joining. I'm Wade. You can find me, I don't know, on YouTube and Twitch and stuff. Where can they find you guys? Uh, right Facebook. here. Right here. On every oh. Monday. Right here. That's true. That's true. This is the best spot. Yeah. Every Monday, download every episode on every platform on a new account and listen. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's fraud. We can't say that. It is. Just use your own account. Your own account. Oh, did I say fine. a new account? I meant your main account. Yeah. Wink. Wink. <laughs> uh, the uh, uh, podcast out. <laughs> <laughs>